views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most inspired visionaries on the planet in lighthearted, lively dialogue. Join us as we explore the expansive nature of reality in a down-to-earth way, offering you insights and tools empowering you to become that bright light you're meant to be now here's your host christine upchurch hello everybody and happy new year welcome to the christine upchurch show where we have stellar conversations to illuminate your journey i'm speaking to you today from the seattle area here at kknw am 1150 if you're not listening to the seattle area you might be listening on wblq in rhode island connecticut or new york somewhere across the United States on cable radio network or anywhere around the world on Transformation Talk Radio. But I tell you, wherever you're listening from today, we have a powerhouse of a show, and I'm so excited about this. This is the the perfect way to start out this new year of 2016. But before I get into that, I have to say hello to my better half here in the studio who allows you to hear these wonderful conversations, Benny Mathers. Happy New Year! Yay! Already a great start to this new year. It is. Wow. It, it, it is a um, you know, mo- momentous year ahead, I'm quite yep. sure of it. I'm totally looking forward to it. Yeah. And before I start getting into the guest who's here, because I'm going to totally lose my train of thought by the very end of this, I have to get the, the announcements out of the way. All right. I just wanted to remind people mm-hmm. that um, I will be presenting the Women of Wisdom. Um, at the w- 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 Can't even talk. I shouldn't <laughs> be on the radio. Slow down. Okay. Take a breath. I know he's intense. I know. so much energy over here. I, I, get, I, I get And it. we're not telling who yet. <laughs> <laughs> I will be presenting the Vibration of Change at the Women of Wisdom Conference on February 15th. So if you're here in the Seattle area, I just want to let you know well in advance that it has to do with how positive lasting change occurs and what that means to you. So I need to get that announcement out of the way. Yeah. Right. <gasps> <gasps> All right. Feel better? <laughs> yes, yes. See? Still sparkly over there. Look uh, at you. Well, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm like, you know, a, a kid on Christmas morning because this is a very, very special show. I'm talking to Matt Kahn, and Matt is just such an amazing human being slash master here on this planet who is here to teach us many, many wonderful lessons. He's a spiritual teacher. He's a highly attuned empathic healer. He is a YouTube phenomenon. I think last count it was like over 4.5 million. I don't know. I've lost track. Five. Oh, we've got confirmed five, confirmation. Five, five million. million. Yep. Woohoo! Wow. Can only imagine. He had this very interesting spontaneous awakening that occurred when he was about eight years old, and then we're going to hear about that. And he has direct experiences with archangels, ascended masters, and he transmits this amazing wisdom that not only affects us like as our mind processes, processes it, but it also affects us on a vibrational level that we feel into our very being, our bodies, our psycholo- psyches. It is very, very powerful. He brings forth revolutionary teachings, both through the written word and the spoken word, and he is here to assist energetically sensitive beings in healing the body, awakening the soul, and transforming our reality through the power of love. His first book has just come out, and it's already a huge hit. The book is called Whatever Arises, Love That. I'd like to welcome Matt Kahn to the show. Hi. Hello. Thanks for having me. It's so nice to have you here again, and congratulations on the birthing of this beautiful creation. Yes. It's... uh... <laughs> oh, and they applaud. That's so amazing. Giant audience, I know. Thank they were reserved at first. <laughs> thank you. You're all too kind. Thank you. Yeah. No, please stay seated. <laughs> it's thank you. It's 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 been quite a journey to put this book together. Not only because it is the first book that I believe I was destined to write, right. but that the process of being able to encode each word with a healing vibrational frequency much like the healing that takes place at our events or 
in the sessions I've done with people over the years, I wanted to create a book that each page would provide or create or inspire the type of healing that seems to emanate through my words and my presence Mm -hmm. for the well-being of every heart on this planet. And I know that there are lots of people who haven't even heard that before, but are having these kinds of experiences. Can you share with what you're you're hearing from people who have picked up these books for the first time? Sure. People are getting their copy of the book, and they're just feeling the energy and just holding it. They're, they're putting it by their beds, and they're sleeping better. Their animals are rolling around on the, each page and absorbing the energy. Just by having the book and reading it, it's improving relationships between family members. I mean, the emails and the stories that we're hearing about this, not just obviously the content of what's written in there right. as a step-by-step guide to opening your heart and accessing your highest potential, but just the energy in the book and people having direct experiences with their angels and guides. Wonderful. It, it's, it's truly remarkable. Yeah. And, you know, the, the full title of the book is Whatever Arises, Love That, A Love Revolution That Begins With You. And we're going to be talking more about what, what the revolution is underway here. But first, I just want to, to give listeners um, sort of a snapshot of how this kind of profound wisdom became, began coming through you. Sure. It, it's been a lifelong journey, uh, many awakening experiences, like people have these existential experiences and breakthroughs where all of a sudden they realize something and it's as if the world is forever different from that moment forward. And right. I've been blessed to have these type of experiences throughout my entire life uh, since the age of maybe about eight years old. It's uh-huh. it's hard for me to remember the exact date right. or the age, but around eight years old, I started having uh, these experiences And until I started speaking about them, I didn't know that other people weren't having these types of experiences. So what sorts of experiences are you talking about? Well, my first experience that I remember, I was walking to a friend's house who was my neighbor. Uh And there was a little brick wall that divided his property from my neighbor's. And I was just looking at this brick wall while walking. And something stopped me in mid-step on the sidewalk. Uh And I was staring at this little brick wall. And there was a voice in my head that profoundly and very directly said, I'm not the body, I'm not the wall, I am the space between it. And ooh, ooh, ooh. Say yes, that again, Matt, because that, that's really <laughs> profound. Yes, I'm staring at this wall, and there's a voice inside of me that says, I'm not the body, I'm not the wall, I am the space between it. Huh. Yes, and as I had that voice say that, I had two simultaneous experiences It was like the costume I was wearing with an eight-year-old mentality Uh did not know what those words meant, but there was a witness within the costume of a child that knew that that was something profound and that at a later date that would click in and that that would be revealed. So it was like I intuitively knew that that would be something that I would realize or that would make more sense, while the eight-year-old mind thought, oh, Okay, that's Mm -hmm. nice. Let's go play Nintendo now. (laughs) So had that realization. And then a few years later, I had one of the most life-changing experiences of my life. I went to sleep like any other night, Mm -hmm. and I thought I was dreaming. And I found myself in the most amazing, breathtakingly beautiful garden I've ever seen in my life, as if the colors were so bright and vibrant that it everything was overflowing with this energy of love. Uh And as a child, I always had a fear of being in unfamiliar territory or being displaced from my family. Right. And the most remarkable sense I had at the beginning of this was I said to myself, I don't know where I am, but I know that I'm safe. And that for me was uh, a very foreign but welcomed experience. Right. I felt loved and held like I'd never been felt like I've never been loved before. Mm-hmm. And as I'm walking through this, this paradise, this beautiful garden, I, I start to walk through a field of what, what seemed to me like waist-high flowers. Mm-hmm. And as I can feel my, you know, my, my young legs pushing through this field of flowers, uh-huh. I then realize that I'm also hovering above them. So, as opposed to walking. Right. So I'm having two experiences at the same time. I'm feeling myself walk through them, but I'm hovering above, like watching myself below. Uh-huh. And I did not know how that was possible, but the love was so palpable that it just kind of became a natural form of acceptance, even though, you know, to my mind, it just seems so mind-boggling. Uh-huh. And as I'm hovering above this field of flowers, I also saw in front of me a figure in a white robe with dark hair and 
shoulder length uh, hair and a beard. Uh And as this being motioned me towards them, I froze. And as I froze, I started naturally floating towards the being automatically. Uh And as I got about 20 feet from the being, probably as close as I am to you, I just saw pure white light emanating out of the pupils of this being. And for some reason, what I thought of was like in a scary movie where people would roll their eyes up until their heads. I don't know why I thought about that. Oh, dear. And that hilarious random thought Uh nearly broke the the, the state of the experience. Okay. And I literally fell through the garden, fell through the sky, and then fell back into my body. And it was only when I fell back into my body that I realized I had left it. And I was sweating and I was freezing at the same time and shaking. Uh-huh. So and this is what fear led you to. Yeah. So it, yeah. It's it just, it, 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 was, it was, for me, it was the sensation of returning to my body that I did not know I was out of. Okay. So it was just, for me, it was like a crash landing back in my body. And in and, and my experience, I don't know if I felt afraid. I just, it was just from the heavens uh-huh. back into physical material form. That just happened so quickly that it was just a lot to adjust to. And then out of the corner of my eye, I saw the same being with the shoulder length hair. But this, this being was outlined in a white energy. Uh-huh. And as I looked at them motioning me towards them, they disappeared. So, of course, the next morning... I tell my parents what happened because we have a very open relationship. My parents have always been very spiritual. That's great. Amazing. Yeah. They're uh, some of my my biggest fans. My biggest fans, actually. Uh Uh-huh. Very blessed to say that. And as I talk to my parents about this experience, they seem to be, you know, get more interested with every detail. And my dad tells me that he had nearly the same exact experience many, many years before. Wow. You know, when he was... um, I think it was during the time that he was in the service. Uh-huh. And he told me the story, which had remarkable similarities. He was in a garden, floating above a field, met the met the being in the white outfit. Right. And it was at that time, again, just like when I saw the wall and I had that realization, I did not know what it meant that we had the same experience. But uh-huh. it just started to show me that there's more, more going in life than the things we see. Right, right. And... There's, there's so much wisdom that has arisen from uh, Matt's path since he was a child, and we're going to learn lots more about that, but we have to go to a quick break. More with the amazing Matt Kahn when we return here on The Christine Upchurch Show. Serenity Bliss Holistic Spa is a complete approach to wellness. Serenity Bliss offers integrated therapies for whole body health. From facials to massage, from laser skin treatments to herbal wellness, from chiropractic care to energy healing. We work with teens who want to put their best face forward, adults of all ages who want to maintain that youthful glow, and anyone who wants to enjoy vibrant well-being head to toe. Serenity Bliss Holistic Spa is bringing the European approach to restoring natural beauty and wellness here to the Seattle area. Located on the east side off the beaten path, yet just minutes from the freeway. If you'd like to experience the joy of relaxation, skincare excellence, and total wellness, then come experience your Serenity Bliss. To learn more or to schedule an appointment, visit serenityblissholisticspa.com. That's serenityblissholisticspa.com. Or call 206-229-0086. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Talk Radio. This is Peggy Snow, practitioner at Stellar Reflections with a Stellar Reflections Minute. So many people these days are trying to find ways to relieve their stress. What happens to our breathing when we're feeling overwhelmed and stress? When we tune in, we realize that we're either holding our breath 
or taking very shallow breath. To signal the body that all is well, which most of the time it is, sometimes all that is needed is a nice, deep breath to break the cycle. First exhale to get all the stale air out by engaging the abdominal muscles and blowing gently. Next, take a nice, full breath in, feeling it fill your body all the way down to your hips. Release fully and enjoy the freedom of movement. Notice how your body feels. Do you feel refreshed? Calmness is only a breath away. This has been a Stellar Reflections Minute. For more information about what we offer at Stellar Reflections, visit us at StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. That's 425-999-9836. Call the Oprah of Radio by her listeners. Award-winning host Dr. Pat Basile is blowing the doors off of traditional talk radio. Get ready for an energizing delivery and powerful interviews with leaders in the field of human potential. Dr. Pat's fresh new perspective on living life full out has catapulted her show to the top of talk radio. Tune in and Dr. Pat will help you thrive instead of merely survive. Visit the drpatshow.com. That's T H E D R Patshow.com for listening times in your area. But a different result But how can we be patient When we're always racing And no one's ever there to hold Anytime you need a fit, baby I will be the one that you want Welcome back to the Christine Eptridge Show here on KKNW, WBLQ, CRN, and Transformation Talk Radio. I'm having a conversation today with the amazing, the wonderful, the wise Matt Kahn and he has a brand new creation. It is in the form of a book that's highly energetic and very powerful with its, with its feel, with its teachings. And it is called Whatever Arises, Love That, A Love Revolution That Begins With You. You know, before the break, Matt, we were talking about um, your childhood experiences. Let's fast forward into adulthood. You eventually started doing intuitive readings. Is that right? Yes. So... As you opened up to these these beings, so it went beyond just that that being in white, right? Right. Um, how, how did that help you on your own spiritual journey? Hmm. Well, I think the first thing it really helped me with is that my throughout my entire life I've had an insatiable desire to explore the mysteries or the unknown. Every time there was something that I saw in a book or on a TV show about the unknown, uh-huh. it's always where I wanted to go, what I wanted to explore. And I remember when I started having these really deep experiences with the guides. Right. I had the, that first initial contact, and then when I was 18, I started having visitations and talking to different angels and ascended masters Mm -hmm. uh, as if the conversations I had with them was also activating and refining my intuitive abilities at the same time. Right. And so as I began having these experiences, I remember saying to myself, this is what I thought school was about. Meaning when I went to school when I was a kid and I'm learning about the things that you have to learn about to be a functioning member of the society. Uh Uh-huh. I remember what I used to call when I was a kid, sleeping with my eyes open. And I was actually in a meditative state, just kind of in my own little way, trying to fast forward the DVD of my life to get to these chapters of my life because I had a sense of where things were going. Right. So when I was learning. But you weren't there yet. So Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like, you know where the movie's going and let's fast forward and get to the. Sure. But you got to live it out at the same time. Right. So I start meeting with these ascended masters and archangels every day in my bedroom as I'm speaking with them and learning about the things that I was really interested in, Uh the mysteries of the universe, it was also activating and refining my intuitive abilities of seeing, hearing, and feeling. Mm -hmm. And then at a certain point, it went from having conversations with these guides to, and I remember the first time it happened, I was in a grocery store and I had this overwhelming feeling to tell someone who I didn't even know some message that came to me. Uh And the feeling was that if I don't tell this person who I don't know this message, I feel like I'm about to have a heart attack. Wow. So, you know, (laughs) the the social, the normal social boundaries would prevent us from just going up to somebody in the grocery store and saying, by the way, you know, such and such. Yeah. Yeah. But you had some physical issues that that were sort of compelling you. (laughs) If it wasn't for that, I don't know if I would have done it Uh because it was, you know, throughout my life, there's always, as a child, there was a fear of rejection, of course. Right. And so there's a fear of like, I'm going to say something completely ridiculous. Uh Person's going to look at me like I'm insane. So I went up to the person. I said, look, I have this message that's coming to me. And Uh if I don't tell you, I think I'm going to have a heart attack. So I just need to tell you this. Uh Sorry in advance if it's 
seems weird. Uh-huh. <laughs> when we're done, we can both just walk away. Right. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> please enjoy the produce. <laughs> and I de- <laughs> please <laughs> get the one with the number nine. <laughs> and I delivered this message, and it was such it was such a profound, surreal moment when they said, "You don't know how deep that connects with me." And oh, wow. it turned out to be a message that help them heal some grief from a lost loved one right. and it was so synchronistic and then I walked away from that experience not with the feeling of yay I did it right uh-huh. but with the feeling of what just happened uh-huh. and it was a little freaky because you know even when you are someone who is who has the ability to do this when it comes through so purely and directly it will be even mysterious to the one who's participating in it Right. So it was just as mysterious for me. I started having more and more of these experiences of, Mm -hmm. oh, tell this person this message, Uh heart attack. And so I would deliver these messages. Every time they would be life-changing for people. Uh But it took me a very long time to really relax into it. Mm -hmm. Because it wasn't like a feeling of, oh, yeah, I'm just going to casually pass this message along. It was just I was compelled. I had to. Uh It was like stepping up to the plate. Of a ba- you know to play baseball. Sure. You have a bat in your hand. You don't even know what it is. Uh-huh. Someone throws a ball at you, and your body just naturally swings, and you hit the ball out of the park. Everyone's cheering, and you have no idea what just happened. Right. So that's how my experience was. People would say, and you know, then I was guided to go into a spiritual bookstore, mm-hmm. and then I was talking to the person about my experiences. Uh-huh. The store owner asked me, "Do you do readings?" Uh-huh. Voice in my head said, "So yes, okay. yes, I do." Right. I don't even know what a reading is. Yeah. And then they would have me sit down with people uh-huh. for the first three seconds. I have no idea what I'm doing. Why am I here? Mm-hmm. Do I need to move somewhere? Like, what is this? Right. Why am I sitting with someone? Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden it would all come out so eloquently and so naturally. And so for me, the abilities were always there, but it took me a little bit of time to really relax into it because uh-huh. it really is stepping into the unknown of what we are all very much capable of if we can refine the process and trust the journey. Yeah, that allowing piece is huge, (laughs) too. What an amazing story. Yeah. So how did you ever go from offering these one-on-one sessions to doing what you're doing these days with these presentations that are often jam-packed, filled with people? Yes. People who are on all over the world, I think, what was it, like 7,000? On our live stream. On your live stream yeah, recently. 7, 000, and, yes. and 600 or some odd people that stuffed into a room somewhere. Yes. How did you go from that to, to transmitting information that's meant for many? Well, I was doing these individual readings, and I, had, I, had, I quickly had many people I was working with on a regular basis. And when I was growing up in the Los Angeles area, I had met Julie, and Julie uh-huh. and I, you know, my beloved, wonderful partner on uh-huh. so many levels. And yeah, Julie's great. Julie's, Julie's amazing. Divine. Julie yeah. is amazing. It, and again, anything that the divine does in form, uh-huh. it is always done as a team effort. And so she and I are an absolutely wonderful team. Uh-huh. And so she and I met. I delivered a message to her. It really touched her. I had one of those experiences of, tell her this or else uh-huh. your heart's going to explode. And right. so I told her that. It really, really profoundly affected her. We started working together, and what was interesting about our connection was that Julie had had a career of learning about the spiritual journey, Uh learning about healing modalities, having worked with many amazing healers and teachers. So she she knew the whole spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. Here I am with someone doing something in a way that no one had really seen before, Uh in a way that had never been offered before, and I have no idea about all these other paths, these teachers. So I'm just naturally being who I am. Right. And so, it's very organic for you, whereas she had learned all these teachings. Right. So she w- she played a pivotal role in being able to confirm, do you know what you're doing? Uh-huh. Oh, my God, you're naturally doing A, B, and C. Oh, my God, do you, do you know how powerful what you do is? Do you, oh, and, and so great. it was like she helped me to understand the depth and the gravity of what I'm just naturally doing. Uh All I'm doing is just following instructions. And so she helped me understand the capacity of what I'm doing. And so then she and I began working together, offering events. And very quickly, our events went from, you know, a few Uh to more. And every single person I ever have come into contact with, I have always served them like I'm serving the entire world as one heart and it's it just this 
movement, this, this, this movement of expanding consciousness just kind of evolved as a grassroots, on a grassroots level. And we have been blessed to offer our work, you know, across the United States. Yeah. Soon now we're going to be going international. And so it's really something, and what's really amazing about this is that the process of us building and building and building and, and really providing this to the world, and now the world is taking notice and it's, things are happening in incredible ways. Yes. That 10-year process gave me the opportunity to really refine what I do in such an exquisite way uh-huh. so that now that, I, now that I am who I am and things have become what they are, uh-huh. I feel like I'm in the best position to serve even more hearts. Because again, my intention, my purpose, my drive is to use the abilities that I have to activate those abilities in others and whatever time that I have with any human being, my greatest honor is to do what I naturally do and to transform someone's life for the well-being of themselves and everyone they come into contact with. I mean, that is my greatest joy, mm-hmm. to celebrate my love for every heart in existence, to serve every heart just as the universe has served me. And, you know, Matt, I've, I've you know, seen many, many of your videos. I've been to your events. Um, the way you present this information and, and some of this information, you know, I've, I've heard in other ways before. Sure. Some of it is brand new. We're, we're going to talk about that in the second half hour. <laughs> but um, there's just something about not only the, the energetics of it, what the room feels like, but also the way you talk about it. And I have to tell you that I just so appreciate the humor oh, within you. this, too, because, you know, once upon a time, it seemed like so many of the spiritual teachers were just so serious about yeah. everything. and. And you make light of our struggles as human beings. Yeah. And it's just so perfect and, and so endearing. Thank you. And we're going to talk about some of Matt's wonderful teachings. And we'll get into some more about the energetics of the awakening process. But we do need to go to another quick break. More with Matt Kahn in a few moments. What does it mean to be healthy? For each of us, it means something a little different. Discover the art of herbal medicine, a natural way to help our bodies respond better to the modern-day stress and toxicity of our everyday lives. Using organic herbs from around the world, the skilled herbalists at Urban Wellness in Kirkland can help you choose the herbs that are right for your body. Find your herbal solutions for common health issues at urbanwellness.com. That's H-E-R-B-A-N wellness.com. What if your body and mind were the compasses to the secrets, mysteries, and magic of life? Glenna Rice, co-host of The Questionable Parent, is inviting you to access all that is possible. Glenna is a 10-year certified veteran access consciousness facilitator who offers an amazing variety of life-changing classes and workshops. Work with Glenna from anywhere with teleclasses and workshops all over the globe. To learn more and see Glenna's current schedule of events, classes, and workshops, visit glennarice.com. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Time. Radio. I'm Christine Upchurch, and this is a Stellar Reflections Minute. For centuries, spiritual traditions have talked about how humans have an energy field, or aura, surrounding them. Although skeptical scientists refuted this for decades, science is now beginning to catch up with spirituality. Scientists can actually measure light emanating from living beings, so they can measure the human aura, which in scientific terms is known as the biofield. Many medical practitioners around the world use an instrument to evaluate a patient's biofield for the purpose of diagnosing illness. They understand that imbalanced or insufficient light in a person's energy field indicates a physical or emotional problem. The good news? There are ways to balance and increase your light, resulting in greater well-being. For more information, please check out StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. That's 425-999-9836. 
What if we really didn't have to die to go to heaven? Are you curious about the afterlife or rebirth? The highly anticipated new book from author Dr. Susan Allison, You Don't Have to Die to Go to Heaven, is available now. Find out how to find guidance and healing in the spirit realms. Order the book today and put it on your must-read list for 2016. Visit DrSusanAllison.com to learn more. Welcome back to the Christine Eptert Show here on KKNW and Transformation Talk Radio. This half hour is just like last half hour in that we are talking to Matt Kahn, the author of Whatever Rises, Love That. And, you know, Matt, we've been talking about the history and how you basically stepped up to this major role on our planet. Why now? Because we are living in perhaps one of the most extraordinary times of spiritual evolution on this planet. It is a transition from, in the past, we have lived on a planet where there is the possibility for individuals to awaken to their full spiritual potential. Uh And now we live in a time where not just uh, the planet is a fertile ground for individuals to awaken, Uh but now that shift expands so that the entire planet the civilization, our society is now going through the very awakening process that so many individuals and way showers and prophets had foreshadowed up to this point. Yeah, and I get chills head to toe when you talk about this. Yeah. It's a really exciting time to be alive. It is. But I think that it's also a very difficult time for those of us who have been asked on some level yeah. to show up and play important roles. Absolutely. And there are so many people out there who are feeling you know, at uh, uh, lack of ease in their life. Sure. Sometimes major catastrophes when they're within their lives, uh, feeling like something needs to shift within them. What is it that is in your teachings that helps people to kind of realign with their, their true nature, their true path, sure. and move forward in a more spiritual way? Well, In so many spiritual traditions or even in everyday life, the common belief in so many beings' minds is a belief that I will feel good or not so good based on what happens to me. Oh, absolutely. Right? That's the common belief that I am a victim of circumstance Mm -hmm. or a beneficiary, a benefactor of my circumstance. And really what we're learning, and of course in the book, Whatever Rises Love That, Mm -hmm. it's a step-by-step guide to realizing it's not a matter of what happens to you but the relationship you have to your experiences. And on a spiritual level, the way we spiritually evolve is really indicative of our relationship with love. How do we return to love? How do we become more loving with ourselves? How do we become more loving with our minds? How do we become more loving with our past? Maybe not to love the things that happened to us, Uh but how do we learn to embrace the one who survived our past? How do we learn to embrace the one who's experiencing life the way we do? Mm -hmm. How do we learn to recognize each thing in our life as an opportunity to be the love for ourselves that perhaps no one in the past has ever been designed or destined to offer us? Mm -hmm. So when the book, you know, is called Whatever Rises Love That, a love revolution that begins with you. Uh The love revolution is I no longer wait for others to treat me the way I desire. I learn step by step how to be the love that I've always been seeking. You know, I I love the fact that you are um, teaching about focusing the love within ourselves, to ourselves, because... I think that there are a lot of lot of teachings out there that are wonderful in certain ways, but yes. it's really focusing on giving the love, projecting that love yes. elsewhere. Yes. And th- the experiences that I've had, just you know, a- applying some of the, you know, the, the wisdom within here, or going through and, and and saying some of the statements that you suggest people repeat, um, has shifted something very significantly within me. And I know it's 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 not just me; it's all over the planet. This right. is happening. Um, as we learn to love ourselves or bring love to ourselves within whatever situations, mm-hmm. 
How does that shift us? Within each human being, within the center of our existence, exists an entire universe. So each human being is literally a physical or an animated manifestation of an entire universe. And when the love that is, we can think of love as the energy of light that the entire universe is comprised of. Uh When you offer love to the center of your being, when you love your heart, the more love you, you deliver into the center of your existence, the more that universe begins to awaken, the brighter the light within you begins to shine. And as that brightness emanates within you, your consciousness expands to remember and to realize the infinite potential, the miraculous nature that always has existed within you. It's like a seed, but it's the love we give to ourself that waters the seed and allows the fragrance of an eternal garden to radiate throughout. I love that. And I also love that you're emphasizing it's not just an awakening, it's a reawakening. Absolutely. A remembrance, a realization, a recognition. And again, there's so many beings on this planet who want to awaken, who want to support the evolution of our society, that want to live on heaven on earth. Sure. And there are so many things we can go about spiritually, but what we're learning in a modern day spiritual journey, which of course this book was written to be a step-by-step guide for a new modern-day spiritual journey, Mm -hmm. is that instead of going about any spiritual goal, which for a lot of people leads to confusion and frustration. Right. It's 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 a it's a pushing. It's 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 basically taking the linear mind and trying to move ourselves through to become more awakened. Absolutely. And so what we're finding is that if our focus is just loving the one who experiences life exactly as you do, Mm -hmm. just by loving our hearts Forgiveness occurs naturally. Acceptance occurs without you trying to be in charge of it. Healing happens auspiciously and miraculously. Uh, The things we wish to manifest through synchronicities come to us in unexplainable ways. Mm -hmm. So instead of having to be in charge of an endless spiritual to-do list that compounds the stress of an everyday life on this planet, instead we just find little spaces in our life to become the one that loves ourselves each and every day greater than the moment before. And even if we start with an I love you, or perhaps that may be foreign for some, right. we just start with, in this moment, I acknowledge that I deserve more love, not less. And You've said that phrase a lot. Yes. I deserve more love, not less. Yes. And you apply it to a lot of different situations. Yes. So what are some of the different situations that are kind of surprising to think in terms of I deserve more love, not less? Well, I think the, the, the reason why I've been guided to teach this way is because traditionally in a spiritual path, people are trying to transform fear into love. Uh-huh. They're trying to transform sadness into love. Right. They're trying to take the negative and turn it into a positive, which then leads us on a spiritual level to judging the negative in favor of the positive. Yes. So instead of oh, it being... so right? important, yes. So instead of it being, I'm going to turn sadness into love... I'm, I'm going to recognize that sadness is only here if I'm feeling it, when I'm feeling uh-huh. it. It's the next one in line to be loved. One of the things I talk about a lot as a benchmark for a really powerful spiritual journey is that if anything you've learned on a spiritual journey, if it's not the way that you would treat a child in, in pain right. or a wounded animal, uh-huh. it's probably not going to help you evolve to the highest vibration of consciousness <laughs> So, for example, yeah. if you would look at a child in pain and said, honey, I need to transmute you into the light before I can talk to you, uh-huh. that's, if th- that doesn't how you would talk to a child. It certainly right. isn't going to help you. So, again, we're not trying to get away from fear because fear is an agent of the divine only dressing up in a way that says, can you transform your relationship with fear instead of trying to change the way it seems to appear in your life. And again, uh-huh. there are a lot of superstitions like if I focus on it, I'm going to manifest more of it and things that really aren't true. Right. Because when fear, when we can be honest enough with ourselves and go, look, I don't like the way I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. Again, you have to be honest. I don't like feeling this way. Yes. But it's here. Just like a parent might say, look, I'm not really a fan of how my child's acting right now. Mm-hmm. I love my child, but right now at the moment, not high on my popularity list. Uh-huh. As much as I don't like the way I feel, I know that like a child, it only deserves more comfort, 
more love, more acceptance, more compassion. Mm -hmm. So can I, instead of trying to get away from it, instead of trying to do spiritual gymnastics, Uh can I just say, wow, I don't like how I feel, even if we said, wow, I hate how I feel, Mm -hmm. and yet this is only here to be loved. And when we do that, no matter how slowly of a step we take or how big of a step we take, just that shift of allegiance from changing our relationship with what we're experiencing, mm-hmm. that shift in and of itself, transform, it transforms us into being the one who's liberating everything within us instead of one who's waiting to be liberated. So it's very empowering in that sense. It's so empowering because we realize I'm only experiencing life in a way that guarantees I'm going to feel exactly the way I need to feel Mm -hmm. as if every emotion is an endless processional line of all the different aspects of my infinite self, like every feeling is a color of the rainbow. And any experience is only going to bring up in my body what is next in line to be loved as it's never been loved before. And as I, who is one with all that is, loves everything within me, one I love you at a time, or one deep breath at a time, because we are all interconnected as one, the more I love myself, the more I transform in my individual life, and the more that I am transforming the entire world so that others can continue their awakening to bring forth the heaven on earth that is already being revealed. Beautiful. We have to go to yet another break, but stay tuned for more with Matt Kahn. How long will I love you? As long as stars are above you And longer if I can How long will I need you? I'm Christine Upchurch, and this is a Stellar Reflections Minute. What does the word healing mean? Many think that healing merely means eliminating symptoms. However, based on my many years as a healer, I have a much broader perspective on the word. Healing can manifest in a variety of ways, including having physical problems resolved, becoming more emotionally centered, experiencing better relationships, gaining greater clarity, and feeling more spiritually connected. True healing always includes some level of transformation. Whatever form healing takes, there is one commonality, an improvement in quality of life. To me, the highest form of healing goes beyond aligning with wellness. It comes from recognizing our soul's voice and allowing it to speak through us. And in that sense, don't we all yearn to heal into our wholeness? Please visit StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. That's 425-999-9836. If you are one of the millions of Americans suffering from anxiety, you probably know how powerless and out of control this emotion can make you feel. This is why it is so important to remember that anxiety is created by your mind, which means that you can learn to use your mind to uncreate it. Hello, my name is Dr. Friedman Schaub. My award-winning book, The Fear and Anxiety Solution, provides you with a step-by-step breakthrough process to understand and resolve the root causes of your anxiety and build a solid foundation of confidence and inner peace. If you're ready to take your power back, visit thefearandanxietysolution.com. That's thefearandanxietysolution.com or call 866-903-6463. That's 866-903-MIND. Have you been seeing numbers like 111 and 222 everywhere you go? Do you feel that the universe may be trying to get your attention, perhaps offering a message of some sort? As it turns out, numerical patterns and certain types of geometry form the very fabric of our reality, from cells under a microscope to the astronomy of our night sky. At Stellar Reflections, we offer special sessions which tap into these patterns, designed specifically to support you on your journey. The 111 and 222 activations are sessions activating new patterns in your energy field, which in turn can help you create new patterns in your life. After just one session with a practitioner, either in person or via distance, clients report gaining greater clarity, becoming more intuitive, and honoring their inner truth as they move forward in their lives. 
Curious about what these transformational sessions might do for you? Call 425-999-9836 or visit StellarReflections.com. That's StellarReflections.com. Welcome back to the Christine Uptrich Show here on KKNW, WBLQ, CRN, and Transformation Talk Radio. You know, Matt, this hour is flying by way too fast, and we <laughs> have know. so much more to talk about. But um, just to sort of expand upon something you've been talking about before, I think that many of us who've been on our journeys for a long time um, have this conflict with ego, right? Yeah. We, we, we think that ego needs to be eliminated, sure, um, and we need to somehow strive for that right you you speak about that in your book some can you share with our listeners a little bit about the our our relationship with the ego sure well in my journey of talking with the universe and getting the teachings that i receive one of the interesting questions i had because at a certain point i started to learn about other spiritual paths and the talking of the destruction of the ego or this is something to overcome like right, a, right. like a mortal enemy and uh-huh. so, again, my question was, well, that's not the way I would ever treat an animal or a child. Uh-huh. So I thought, well, if there's something on a spiritual path that's being taught or perceived in a way that is less than loving, how can that be part of the highest teachings? Because in my experience, I would experience these light realms and encounters with angels. And not only do they have very profound things to say, but they, the energy was always the most high and the most loving. Uh-huh. So if there was something that wasn't taught from a place of unconditional love, I, to me it seemed like there was either a mix-up, a misunderstanding, or it just wasn't the highest possibility. Right. So one of the questions I asked the universe is, okay, well, what is ego really? Because it doesn't make sense to me that, you know, in the beginning there was this all-knowing, all-loving presence of divinity. Mm-hmm. Uh, it took a coffee break. <laughs> and then it came back, and there was this ego, and it goes, well, I can't. I can't do anything about that. Let's right. just, whoops. <laughs> whoops, sorry, human beings. Let's just, you know, uh-huh. sorry, I don't, I'll pay you back. I'll, you know, we'll invent the internet. <laughs> You'll love it. Sorry about the ego. Uh, yeah. Play Angry Birds. <laughs> Tweet. Twitter about it. Facebook. Uh, like me on Instagram. So uh, it didn't make sense that there were these two things, like all loving, all knowing, and uh-huh. this pesky ego. Right. So I asked the universe, okay, what is ego really? And, and eventually what came to me as an answer, because sometimes we ask and we get direct sure. guidance. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you have to ask and it's kind of like, we'll let you know. Sure. Yeah. Right? You have to wait until it's time. Right. Sometimes the universe is like the cable company between now and never. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yes. I put in my question. I'll get the answer between now and never. And it eventually came to me that the ego is the imaginary identity of an overstimulated nervous system. And what seemed to me in a vision I had was that we all go through a conditioning process. Uh We do it to be energetically in alignment with our families and the world around us. It's almost like we're angels. We we parachute into the planet. Uh We match the vibration of the world to be these characters so that as we start reawakening and remembering, because we're now connected to all people our awakening starts to inspire their awakening. Right. And you talk about the central nervous system, and yeah. I had never heard this information before, and I find it fascinating. Share yeah. more about how the central nervous system relates to our awakening. So when we get conditioned as children, we, our nervous system goes into a state of overstimulation. It's almost as if we create an energetic and psychological cocoon that for most of our lives is where the soul or the seed of divinity is incubating and growing, kind of like Uh a cocoon where a butterfly will eventually be revealed. And so throughout our lives, as this butterfly is growing, as human beings and characters, we we tend to act a little, you know, (laughs) not of our truest self, let's say. Right, right, right. And, you know, might call it misbehavior, but really, from your perspective, none of it is misbehavior. It's it's really... All divine. It's all divine, but we're, what, what we are doing, and unfortunately it, it, it becomes how we treat others and ourselves, uh-huh. what we are doing is we are responding unconsciously to the growing pains of our own awakening divinity. Mm. And so the, the nervous system gets into a state of overstimulation, which creates this cocoon-like structure to where our personality gets exaggerated 
We identify with our environments, Mm -hmm. with the roles we play. And and we're, we're kind of living as the character prior to awakening. And again, we're not trying to get away from our personalities. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is we are allowing consciousness to build up momentum so that as it awakens, the personality becomes the space through which divinity can be expressed in its most unique form. So the ego, I look at it in very simple terms as a stage of spiritual development. Oh, I love that. It's a stage of spiritual development. And if, when you view it that way, it's no longer the enemy. It becomes it becomes a friend and something that do, does deserve love. Absolutely. And so if we think of a being going through a critical stage of spiritual development and then imagining a being who's going through that spiritual development uh-huh. has to also function every day in their families and at their work, right. we start to realize, my goodness, the reason this person may not be nice to me or the reason I may act in a way that is not of my highest, you know, mm-hmm. self is because I am trying to function on a planet. I'm trying to maintain a job, take care of my family while going through one of the most extraordinary spiritual awakenings, oh. you know, that any soul can ever participate in. So what we realize when we start to really get into the nuts and bolts of what ego is, Mm -hmm. it lets us have such compassion for ourselves and even greater patience for others because when we're not acting our most loving self, it's because we're just unaware of the growing pains and the depth of transformation happening within us because many beings will say, I can't recognize the transformation until I see goodness, until I feel goodness, Uh or until I act in accordance with goodness. And what we're really seeing is that it's wonderful when we act from a space of goodness, but when we're not in that goodness, when we're not in a space of Uh open-heartedness, that's when we all deserve more love, not less. So this book is really about not waiting for your good behavior Uh to allow love to be the reward. But when you're not acting loving, that's when you need it the most, and that's when your relationship with life can transform the most and that's when the greatest awakenings can occur in your life. And that's taking the, the judgment that is so inherent in many religions. It, yes. takes, the, it takes the judgment out of the, the spiritual path and just, you know, emphasizes the love a, a, as a part of the journey. Absolutely. In fact, if we just took some, you know, like just as a general, with many religions, it's kind of like there's a rule book of here's how you should be. Mm-hmm, if, right. we re, if we rephrased it, it, it should be here's how you're going to act when you're awake. Right. And, it, and prior to awake, if you're not acting this way, uh-huh. those are the parts that need to be loved. So right. those, that's the new rule book. I love that. <laughs> I absolutely adore that because it, it takes the pressure off. Yeah. And um, there's so many people who who are on their, their journeys and, and are doing wonderful work, and yet they still judge themselves. They still, they still have reasons not to love themselves, and it seems like that unworthiness just gets in the way. Absolutely, and, th- and we could also think of it as so many people want to be connected to the universe, and they don't feel that connection. And I mm-hmm. think part of the reason is the universe is always the first in line to be on your side. And if you're not also on your side 100% of the time, Uh just like the universe is, you're not going to hear what the universe is always providing and saying to you. Wow, I love that. So in order to allow that that loving flow and guidance from the universe, you have to... Always be on your side. Be on your own side. Even if you say to yourself, wow, the way I'm acting right now is regrettable, Uh then let me take a moment instead of harming another, Mm -hmm. let me just love my heart. Not as if rewarding unsavory behavior uh-huh. is going to cause you to act out that same behavior. But let me recognize that perhaps I'm only treating others unfairly. Perhaps I'm only feeling so victimized. Perhaps I'm only so frustrated because I'm literally fighting life. But when I fight life, it's because I'm fighting for my own loving attention. Wow. Wow. And this time has just flown by. I do want to mention, um, Matt Kahn's website, truedivinenature.com. That's truedivinenature.com. And there are links from there to get his book. Um, Also, 
we're, we're waving at cameras Sorry. here. There uh, also <laughs> video thing. <laughs> on uh, there'll be a replay of of this on christineupchurch.com. You'll you'll see it on the radio show page and there will be links for the book there as well. Matt, it's always a joy to see oh, you and to you. be with you and to to be a participant in this and and to get to receive your wisdom. Thank you. It's an honor. It's truly an honor to serve so many hearts. It's an honor to be with you. It's an honor to be alive at this time on our planet. May all be blessed. May all be blessed, yes. Thank you for joining us here today, and uh, I'll be talking to you again sometime soon. Bye, everybody. You've been listening to The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey. Each week, this show engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information about the transformative healing work of Christine, visit www. Dot stellarreflections.com and for weekly topics visit www.transformationtalkradio.com 